Number 45, determine the number of moles and the mass requested for each reaction in exercise 4.44. And then we have letter C out of those exercises. So in this case, we need to find the number of moles and the mass of magnesium carbonate, which is MgCl3, required to produce 283 grams of carbon dioxide. And they gave us a little hint here. They said that magnesium oxide, MgO, is the other product. Okay, so stoichiometry time. I know this because I see that they only gave me one number, right? They gave me 283 grams of a compound, carbon dioxide, and they're asking for information, the moles and the mass, of another compound. When you see this, we have to do stoichiometry, which is just a fancy way of saying doing conversions with the balanced equation. But I said a very important two words there, balanced equation. They didn't give us an equation, so we have to make it ourselves. Now, if you guys have been on the playlist, we've done tons of questions knowing how to balance equations, how to make equations, and then balance them. So this part should be a review, okay? And if you need more help, you can go back, you know, to, to look at those videos whenever you'd like, all right? So if you want, pause the video and see if you can come up with the balanced equation and then check with mine. But I'm just going to run through it right now. Let's see, they wanted to find the moles and the mass of magnesium carbonate required to produce carbon dioxide and MgO as the other product. So it looks like magnesium carbonate is my reactant. So MgCO3 is used to produce carbon dioxide, which we know is CO2. And MgO, they told us that was the other product. And there you go. All the elements are accounted for. However, this is not good enough, right? Just make sure that you see that it's balanced. But as I'm looking at this right now, everything is balanced, so I don't have to put any coefficients here. All right, first part done. Second thing that I like to do is I like to just get, get all my thoughts or oh my th all my thoughts organized, right? And I'd like to just list what I have and what I'm supposed to find. So in this case, they told me that we're, we have 283 grams of carbon dioxide. So I'm going to go to carbon dioxide and put 283 grams of that. And then I'm going to write down what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find the, the moles and the mass required of MgCO3, so which is this compound. So I'm going to say moles equals question mark and grams equals question mark. Remember, grams are um, a mass, right? Okay, now you can kind of see more clearly that I'm starting off with information of one compound and I'm looking for another compound's information. Now, we're ready to do the conversion. Remember this flow, which is this. Now, I color-coded it uh, for you guys, all right? The reds or the A is the information or the compound that they gave you the number for. That's the starting. And the blues, aka the, the B guys, is the compound or the element that you're trying to solve for. So it looks like this is my starting and this is my ending. These are the, gonna be the reds and this is gonna be the blue. So I'm just going to cater this little thing here to what we need. And just remember, you know, put this down on your test or quiz, all right? And just remember, you know, it's always grams to moles to moles to grams. Grams to moles to moles to grams, and you convert at this stage of the game when one compound goes to the other. So in this case, they started us off with 283 grams of not A anymore. Specifically, it's CO2. And... From there, I can find out the moles of, specifically, CO2. Then from there, what I have to do is I'm going to convert into my moles of my uh, MgCO3, because that's the information that they wanted from me. So maybe I'll just make this a little bit bigger. MgCO3. And then from there, I can find out my grams of MgCO3. Cool. 
Now this whole schematic is based off of exactly what we need. So let's get down to business. Start with what you're given. And in this case, I will color code as well, just to kind of keep with the reds and the blues. So I have 283 grams of CO2, and I have to first convert into moles of CO2. Well, we've done this conversion many, many times, right? All you do is just multiply by a ratio, work with the units first, and then double back and put the numbers. So I don't want grams of CO2. That goes on the opposite side. So that will go on the bottom. And just look to see what's going on the top. Mole of CO2 goes up on the top. Units are accounted for, but now the question is, what are the numbers that go here? Well, we've seen this type of conversion, right? Whenever we're converting from grams of something to moles of the same thing, we use the periodic table. So get your periodic tables out, okay? And remember, when we are using the periodic table, we always have one mole of that substance, okay? So one mole of CO2 equals the mass of CO2 on the periodic table. So this will be great practice. Maybe I will just move this over here. Okay, perfect. Now remember, on the periodic table, we got one carbon and two oxygens. So 12.01 plus 32, because 16 times 2 is 32. So I get 44. 0.01. Everything is accounted for here. I got numbers and units for both, so I can now cancel. I cancel out the units that are the same on the, on the top and the bottom, not the numbers. So the numbers stay in. Now, try to get out of the habit of solving each individual step. It's going to waste time on your tests and quizzes, okay? So just keep running with it. I know you guys can do this. And we're going to do the same thing as we just did. We have to make a multiplication sign and make a ratio. What's now going to be on the top and what's now going to be on the bottom? The same flow that we just had. Look at the unit that you have. You don't want that anymore. So that goes on the opposite side. And now look ahead. We're now, you know, going this way. So moles of mg CO3 is going to be on the top. Units are accounted for. Now we need to figure out what those numbers are going to be. Well, a mole to mole ratio is the only thing that's new here, technically. When you want to convert a mole of one compound to mole of another compound, the only thing that is in relationship with them is the balanced equation. So in this case, we are going to the balanced equation. That's why we need that equation. And we are only looking at the coefficients, AKA the big numbers in the front. But if I look at all of these, I don't see any numbers in front of the coefficients. But remember, that means that, the, whoa. <laughs> that means that there's one of each, right? If you don't see a number, that means that you secretly have a one there. Only pay attention to the compounds that they're asking for in your conversion. So I have one of these and one of these. Everything is accounted for in this ratio. So now I'm going to cancel out my like units. And now I have one of my answers, right? They wanted moles of mg CO3. So that's what I'm going to get. Now I'm going to equal and solve. As far as, you know, doing the math, one divided by one is one. So I don't even have to really look at this part. All I'm going to do is 283 divided by... 44.01. Now, just remember that for sig fig purposes, which I don't care about, but your teacher or professor may, so I'm just going to let you guys know, any of the conversion factors in here hold no weight when you're doing sig figs. Whatever number, the amount of sig figs that are in your number in the beginning, equals the number of sig figs at the end. So I should have a total of three sig figs. So I'm going to put this number into scientific notation. 1.25, if I round, times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's mole of magnesium. Wait a minute. I'm looking at that number. See, sometimes I'm 
I, I'm looking at this, right? And I see that I have a really, really big number here, but I only have 283 grams. I accidentally put times 44.01. So just make sure. So I'm going to do that again. There we go. That looks much better. 6.43 moles of MgCO3. Answer one, done. Now, I'm just going to keep going. I just found out the moles of magnesium carbonate. The second thing that they wanted me to find out was what was the mass. So I'm just going to keep on with this number. So 6.43, and I'll still color code it, so mole of MgCO3. We kind of do the same thing as before. Multiply by that ratio. You don't want this unit anymore, so that goes on the bottom. The unit that you want goes on top, which is grams of MgCO3. The units are accounted for. Now we just need to find those numbers, but it's a mole and gram conversion, just like we had before. Grams to moles, moles to grams, right? It's the same thing. We got to use the periodic table. And when we're using the periodic table, we always have one mole. So that's standard. Now, the mass number is the number that goes on the top with the grams. We have one magnesium, one carbon, and three oxygens, so we have to add all of those up. So 24.31 for the magnesium, plus 12.01 for the carbon, and then plus three oxygens. So three times 16 is whatever, 48, right? So I add all those up, I get 84.32. Everything is accounted for in this ratio, so now I go back and I cancel my units, and the only unit that's left is grams of magnesium carbonate, so we are good. So now I multiply. Ah, so this time 6.43, three sig figs, so 542 grams of magnesium carbonate. Those are my two numbers. Remember, these two answers are equivalent. They are just in different units. This is just a unit for quantity. This is how many grams there are, but it's their numbers are the same, right? Just different units. Now, to put this into perspective, we just found out how many grams it would take for magnesium carbonate to produce 243 grams of carbon dioxide. So if I wanted to produce 283 grams of carbon dioxide, I need to put in 542 grams of magnesium carbonate. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Guys, we are done with this one. What do you think? Subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 10K, which is absolutely incredible. And that's all thanks to you guys. So with more subscribers, it just gets the word out there that this service exists, you know, and that would help out students. So thank you so much for that. Like the video if you want to, but if not, that's okay. All right, love you guys. You guys are, you guys rock. And I will see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.